We haven't yet got to the bottom of what it is that Boris Johnson is going to do if there isn't a, a deal from the EU, if there isn't a, if there isn't a, 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 a bid by, oh, if there is a bid by Parliament to actually stop a no deal Brexit. What is he planning to do on the thirty first of October to actually deliver Brexit? Has he told you? Um, I discussed this with Boris. Yes, I mean the, the, the Parliament has voted to leave on the thirty first of October, um, and actually, in, in strict terms, Parliament voted to leave regardless of whether there is a deal or not because it voted to invoke Article 50 and pass the EU Withdrawal Act. So that is the default option. Um, and I believe that it is vital that we press ahead and get this done because... No, the, no, the Theresa Villiers, with, with all due respect, I, what you, I mean, I absolutely want to hear what you think. But I was asking you, do we know, and has Boris Johnson told you what he plans to do in the event that Remain voting MPs in the House of Commons say, nah, we're not leaving with no deal, you haven't got a deal from the EU, which the EU says won't be available. What does he do? Has he told you? Is he willing to prorogue Parliament? Is he going to call a general election? What is he going to do? Because saying that's what he wants to do doesn't matter if we don't know what he's going to do if it's going to be stopped. Well, he's, he's said both publicly and privately that we'll be leaving on the 31st of October, deal or no deal. He's also said that he wants to engage with the EU to, to, try, and, uh, to, to try and get better terms, in particular to go back to the offer that Donald Tusk made. And once again, can I ask agreement. you for the third time, if he doesn't get a deal from the EU, which Parliament will vote through, if he has to go for a no deal and Parliament votes to revoke Article 50, what has he told you, as one of his supporters, as a Leave voter yourself, you want to deliver breaks, what has he told you he is willing to do to make sure that happens? He has... We, we Parliament actually had the opportunity to start the process of trying to frustrate um, our departure from the European Union when... Um, Jeremy Corbyn table and opposition day debate on. And it didn't work that time, though. but there were lots of Labour abstentions. They might get a majority come October the 30th. I, I, with all due respect, are you planning to answer my question? Part, unless Parliament has already voted to leave the European Union. I know that. And unless, unless there is a majority in Parliament there's some kind of legislation. Yes, and in the that, event that there that is, is a majority to vote to revoke Article 50 and prevent a no-deal Brexit, which has been threatened, including by some members on your own side, Dominic Grieve, Philip Hammond and the rest, what is Boris Johnson, as Prime Minister of this country, who's promised to leave by October the 31st, willing to do to make sure that happens? What has he told you? You're supporting him and backing him. You're going on the public airways to say you back him to deliver Brexit. How is he going to do it? He is, he is going to be working with parliamentarians to ensure that we leave on the 31st of October. And we have only recently demonstrated that, um, A, it's not easy for Parliament to try and frustrate the elected, and B, there isn't necessarily a majority to do that. It, there's, there's the assumption out there in the commentary act that there's definitely a majority in Parliament which won't tolerate leaving you. Am I, am I right in thinking but, but, that he hasn't told you what he's willing to do? He has been clear that we need to leave on the 31st of October. <laughs> that's not an answer. Deal, and that's, that's why he's... Has he not told you? Have you not asked him? Has he not told you? Have you asked him he refused to tell you? Or has he told you? He's been very clear. He will, he will negotiate with the EU for, for better terms. And if, if they are not available, um, we will leave on the 31st of October without a deal. It's not his preferred outcome. But we, as a party, have promised to leave the European Union. So he'd, prorog he'd prorogue the House of... There, but, Julia, many people out there are just fed up. They want to yes. get this sorted one way or the yeah, other. Yeah, but that's not what I asked you, with all due respect. We cannot continue with these, with these endless extensions. I do not believe that there's a majority in Parliament okay. to revoke Article 50. I just don't believe that they will vote that way, in which case... We leave on the 31st of October, either with new terms from the EU okay. or on WTO. And you're confident he will do whatever is necessary to do that? I, I believe that, yes. Okay. I'm confident that he will, he will implement the promise that the Conservatives made in their manifesto for us to leave the EU All and right. the referendum. Result. Theresa Villiers, thank you very much for joining us, Tory MP, supporting Boris Johnson. You had former Northern Ireland Secretary. Let's uh, join by a former Labour MP, former uh, Shadow Home Secretary, Labour Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, who joins us now. Good morning to you.
Good morning, Julia. Good morning. Now, again, although this is an internal matter for the Conservative Party, just for MPs to decide this week and then party membership, of course, uh, the rest of us are going to be affected because the, whichever man it is, is going to be our next Prime Minister. Um, did you watch the debate and what did you make of it? I did uh, watch the debate and probably I was unique in the country, Julia, in being able to feel a shred of sympathy <laughs> for the five on those two. <laughs> I've been there, as, as you might remember, uh, and it's such an awful experience to sit there in that way. And, uh, oh God, yeah, it's cringy, wasn't it? So curly. Um, what did I uh, take away from it? I mean, in some ways, I'm not, not best placed to comment on leadership elections, having lost two myself. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to disagree with your last guest, because they're all about differentiation, aren't they, leadership elections? If everyone's saying the same thing, I agree with Sajid, I agree with Jeremy, that doesn't get you anywhere. The only one, to me, who is actually differentiating himself is Rory Stewart. And I wouldn't say he had a brilliant night, I agree with that. But he did say, when others were outbidding themselves on tax cuts, as though that was the most important thing the country needs, I wouldn't, we, we shouldn't now, it's investment in public services. Every single Tory councillor in the land knows that we cannot carry on with local government in the state that it's in. And if Rory develops that theme and says we can't have more Tory councils going bust, we, you know, we, we must start investing in public services, I think he could strike a real chord with the Tory grassroots. Although, and like to say so. We did see, though, didn't we, Boris Johnson uh, sort of rowing back in on his pledge. And again, I, I agree with you. I thought it was a bizarre pledge to make about cutting the higher rate tax again. As a, again, maybe that's something we might want to do in the future as, as a country. But whether or not that's a priority right now after years of austerity, I think is, 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 is quite bizarre. But he did row back on that as being something that was more of a, a long term plan as opposed to something he would initiate straight away. So we did see some 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 going back on that. But of course, Abdi Benjamin, you're going to be more supportive of Rory Stewart because, of course, he's basically the only really, let's be honest, staunch Remainer who's left in the race since, uh, other than Sam Jima after he dropped out. So, of course, everyone on the left, everyone on the Remain camp is, uh, is saying how wonderful Rory Stewart is. The reality is Tory MPs might have given him 37 votes yesterday, but Tory, even if he gets through to the final two, Tory voters, I mean, Tory members aren't going to vote for him. He's not going to be the next Tory leader or Prime Minister. Well, who knows? I mean, I, I, I just said that some Tory councillors will have, uh, I think, picked up what he said last night. I, it, it's odd. I, people would have said that about uh, Jeremy Corbyn when he came into the race. <laughs> Fair okay. point. So, you know, you can't really predict these things with the kind of usual Westminster analysis. I think they are very volatile uh, competitions. And I think, again, I mean, I'm not, I don't think he had a brilliant night, by the way, and I didn't like what he said about Trump at all. But I thought this question he keeps posing about how will you deliver this deal before um, October um, and what does it mean for no deal? I mean, they're all in a bit of fantasy land. I think the danger for the Tory party is it's going down a sort of a chasing the Brexit party into the distance, isn't it? And it's, it should be speaking to Remain voters. If they're talking about uniting the country, they are going to have to talk more compromise than who's got the, the toughest stance on no deal. And I think this is where, you know, the, the Tory party may be about to make an historic mistake. It's meant to be a party of the whole country that is able to unite, and it is so frightened, it seems to me, by the Brexit party that it, that it seems to be abandoning that space. And, and yet, most staunch Brexiteers, most staunch Brexiteers I know, are very fearful. There's no one left in the race after Dominic Raab got uh, ousted yesterday, having not reached the uh, the 33 threshold. Uh, that, um, that 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 the no one who was actually is going to be trusted to deliver a proper Brexit. Let's talk about Labour Party policy on this day, because uh, today it is understood that uh, there's going to be a shadow cabinet meeting to discuss uh, changing Labour policy and moving from this option of sort of we would like there to be you know changes made to any possible withdrawal agreement and a general election and failing that a, a confirmatory uh, a referendum, a second referendum, but now moving towards that as the official party policy, a, having a confirmatory vote. Um, you presumably would support that? No, uh, no, not necessarily. I think the Labour Party has been in the right position so far, to be honest. I know they've Sitting on the fence? Not many plaudits for it. A bit more than that, Julie. What they've been saying is we need a compromise in the national interest. Now, that's not going to cut through on the doorstep of a European election, but it's actually the right thing to do. We need a compromise here if this country is to come back together quickly. If one side wins over the other, that is going to leave us divided for a generation and in a quite angry place, I think. So they've been right, I think, to camp out on that ground. 
and I think they should continue uh, to argue uh, for that type of compromise. The thing that surprised me about the whole Brexit debate, Julia, is we've almost been arguing for a solution on day one after leaving. I've always thought that the best thing to do is just to kind of leave and then carry on in a more measured way, debating, well, where do we actually want to end up? So, you know, the day one position is not the end position. Surely that's what we should be doing. That's why I've often said that the Norway option is the safest way to leave the European Union. But then it leaves uh, all the options uh, really on the table as to how far we move and, and where we actually end up. And, and that is what, if, if I was anybody, in, if I was in Parliament now, I would be advocating for that. We need to respect the referendum result, but we need to leave in the safest way possible so that we don't damage people's jobs, we don't damage the security of the country. But we can then carry on debating at our own leisure, not to any deadline set by Europe, where we want to actually end up. Now, I don't know if that Burnham plan for Brexit makes any sense, but that is what <laughs> I was putting forward. Because well, the, the, the key is, just to move the country forward out of this limbo that we're in right now that is getting more and more dangerous by the while. If Boris Johnson is elected, I think a no-deal scenario is almost a, an inevitability, and then I would support a referendum, a second referendum. Okay. So the Labour Party, in my view, is probably going too early on this. It only arises for me if we're looking at no deal in the face. Um, now, today, just finally, you're speaking as the NHS Confederation Annual Conference, uh, and uh, you're going to be talking about some of these promises about tax cuts of Conservative leadership candidates. And again, I think if Brexit was over and done with, I think we much more talk about other domestic policies. But as a former health secretary, of course, um, uh, you, you're, you're going to be, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, very critical of the possibility of those cuts and where you would actually rather have that money spent. I am certainly going to say that, uh, Julia. I know you don't think that politicians can get angry at politics, but we do, I can assure you, and very disillusioned at times. And the lowest point for me in, in recent times came a fortnight ago when politicians were rightly queuing up uh, to, to lord the D-Day generation. But on the very same day, there was a panorama programme which showed the reality of the lives of the majority of the wartime generation where they are left without support and without dignity in their own home because social care is collapsing. If, if something exposes the hypocrisy of politics, that programme uh, was it on that particular day. And that's why I do agree with what Rory Stewart said last night. Tax cuts are not the priority. The care of older and disabled people should be our, our top priority right now. Uh, and that's what I will okay. say to the conference uh, today. We have improved social care in Greater Manchester in the last two years through devolution by bringing the NHS and social care together. We've got a lot more care homes that are rated good or outstanding. Uh, we've virtually eliminated 15-minute care visits, uh, but we can only go so, so far from integration. More money has to come into the system if we are to give that wartime generation the dignity Okay. they deserve. And that is what I'm going to be saying to all of them. What is your plan for social care?